Kailangan nating talunin itong pandemic na to. Kailangan lumaban eh. At kailangan may gawin. I'm not going to be part of that 40% that will not survive and that's it. There's still a drop of life. Then I'm gonna hold on to that and I'm gonna keep it alive. Even just buying one mask na 35 pesos. It's like we dance for joy. Kung nag-umpisa ka na, sana may bumili ng tinda ko. Parang back to basic ako. Doon mo ma-feel na, ah, okay, may pag-asa pala. For the sake of the Filipinos, we just have to give it a fight, di ba? Pwede pang, pwede pang. Good afternoon. It is exactly 12 oh, oh, turn 12 oh, 6. Good afternoon, everyone. It's another beautiful Wednesday morning. Hello, Betty. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Yeah. Good lunch to all, to both of you yeah. <laughs> and everybody. Oh, we haven't. I'm hungry. <laughs> so not yeah, I haven't eaten anything. So I'll definitely oh. eat something after. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Anyway. It's now, yeah, we're back here at your Wednesday lunchtime habit. Good mm -hmm. habit, of course, our revolution, the health revolution. And today we'll be talking about, well, it's there, isolation in pandemic times, so although kind of scary, but it's not really that scary. We're just so concerned about, you know, the prolonged lockdown that you might be in isolation for so long. So we're here to tell you. Well, it's okay, especially Paul will do a presentation. And of course, we have, as announced in our IG and in our other social media platforms, we have no less than Miss Aya De Leon, a partner, singer, songwriter, to share her, I uh, know, her take and her, uh, well, her version of isolation. You know. So, good afternoon. And uh, Betty. Yeah, uh, hello. Yeah, uh, hello to everybody, to our listeners, our revolutionaries. Uh, so uh, I think Paul is with us today to talk about isolation, a topic uh, which uh, Paul has been, uh, uh, how would you call this, uh, has been uh, propagating uh, that uh, I think isolation yeah, not be bad, right? So, uh, so Paul, why don't you give our audience here a, uh, a brief background on uh, what uh, your organization is uh, espousing? Mm. Yeah, so uh, me and my wife have this organization called Safe and Sound for Mental Health. And um, what we do is we, well, before the pandemic, we would have uh, like um, events and awareness events and we had talked about different mm -hmm. uh, symptoms like depression anxiety and and maybe different illnesses help people be aware um and then we also do like um 
peer-to-peer -peer counseling. You know, people can mm -hmm. sign up from our website, mm -hmm. and then we can talk to them, you know, once a week or every other week. It just just to be there for people. Um, and then right now, what we more focus on is we uh, we do like a support group for teenagers every week. Mm -hmm. We have about mm -hmm. 20 kids, awesome. and um, awesome. So there's about two support groups, 10 each. And so we just mm -hmm. talk about, we just process through information like during this pandemic time. Then we talk about a lot of different subjects. And we just, mm -hmm. we just help kids have a healthy uh, mindset about stuff, which is important, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then be aware of the unhealthy stuff too. And, and uh, it's just a, a, a safe place for people to be, to be able to talk about stuff. And we mm -hmm. think it's important no matter what's in your mind, even if it's the most darkest thing in the world, uh, it's very important to talk about it and get it out and get it out in a safe environment. It can be, it's, it's very healthy. So, yeah, so that, that's what we're about. Yeah, that, that's a, actually a very good advocacy because uh, I think a lot of our young people now have, uh, have unrealized problem of uh, loneliness, isolation, so what got you into this uh, organization? Why did you start this organization? It, good. This is a good question. I, I like. Uh, thanks for asking me that. But um, why I got into it is so I, I actually have some of my own issues, and I'm not shy to say this that I have post-traumatic stress disorder, um, mm -hmm. and I have. Actually, I was in the treatment of either being diagnosed with bipolar two or borderline personality disorder, mm -hmm. um, and I've also had several major depressive episodes. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of symptoms and a lot of things that I understand and I can mm -hmm. relate to. So, you know, long story short, I, I you know I've been through a lot in my life. I've been through suicidal attempts. I've been through very very much lows in my life and. You know, I personally have a relationship with God, and so my relationship with God, I felt like God was telling me, you know, not verbally, but I felt like in my heart that God was telling me that he wanted me, the very thing I struggle with, that it can be used for good. So um, one day it just kind of hit me that, hey, I can do something about this, you know. When we're in, when we're in the, our, our darkest moments, we have a few choices. We can we can sure be dark, and we can go to really mm -hmm. bad places. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also have a yeah. choice to do something positive with it. So yes, uh -huh. it's, uh, it's, it's yeah, it's always okay. I always say it's always okay to be not okay, right? right. Because we always have our episodes. You know, life is not full. It's not a bed of roses. We have our share of problems. But I think the important thing is for us to be able to cope with it to solve and to resolve it. And uh, I think uh, because if you have your, you know, I like to talk to people who have uh, first-hand experiences on uh, this kind of problem because uh, it takes one to be able to address the issue uh, better, right? Because I can, you know, I can always have a theory about something, but uh, like you, I think you would be one of the best persons to, you know, to consult if ever they have, uh, if people ever have any issues with uh, this kind of a problem, right? And sure. uh, yeah, and fortunately, I'm happy to hear that uh, you have, uh, but you have an organization like this. So, uh, so you, you uh, help people. So how do you go about with the support group? That should be, since it's pandemic, so you do it through a uh, or something? No, we meet up on Starbucks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, joke long, joke long. No, we, uh -huh. we meet, we meet um, on Zoom every yeah, week. Zoom. Yeah. So every Fridays we meet on it's Zoom. A bridge, yeah. Bridge oh. meeting. So they come from, from different places. So they come from this after-school program actually called Abutala, and oh. uh, so it's a, they have a lot of like different classes and stuff for the kids. So they just kind of added mm. safe and sound to one of their classes that the kids can take. Uh huh. So it's like a collaboration with the no with a uh, school. Yeah, I guess you can say that. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, okay. 
Well, that makes for more success, uh, more more chances of success. Well, it it also teaches me a lot too. Mm -hmm. it, every week, yeah. it, you know, it's 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 a good thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. Some people and, do and, not realize it, but you know, with our experiences like this, you know, even like me, I I said that life is a continuous learning process. Every people we meet, we are able to learn something from them, right? So yeah, that's, that's make uh, that that makes life interesting. Yeah, that's very true. So right so, now, uh, so if, yes, how do you do? Do you have uh, like uh, uh, how can people contact you, or how do they go about joining your group? Or yeah, so they also, can go on. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. And I was just going because before it slipped my mind. And I was mm -hmm. also going to ask if, you know, you will be doing something, you know, digital about uh, your programs. Oh, uh, we have we I mean, we have stuff on Instagram. You can find us on uh, Safe and Sound FMH. Mm -hmm. uh, and then same thing on our Facebook, Safe, uh, Safe and Sound FMH. Mm -hmm. um, for FMA stands for mental health. So um, on our Facebook page, there's like there's like a sign up sheet. Like if you want to be a part of a, like a support group or just need someone to talk to, you can sign up there, and then we'll just go from there. So. Okay. So we will, we will uh, share the screen later. Okay, so I think now uh, it's it's 12:15, and we have to start with the uh, presentation. Uh, Paul, about this, you know, this isolation thing that's been, you know, been a, starting to become a, a big problem. Sure. In, uh, other yeah. mental health issues. So, can I share the screen now? Yeah, go for it. So, isolation, how does it affect us and how to cope healthily? Isolation and loneliness. Actually, kind of funny here. I misspelled the word loneliness, so I didn't add the e. So it would have been loneliness. So <laughs> oh, thanks, Betty, for pointing that out. <laughs> so yeah, you can go next slide. Well, I think uh, oh, loneliness slide. without the e would be a good spelling. <laughs> it it means you are not alone. <laughs> True. Well, people are not alone. I mean, uh, at least at least they can talk to people on the internet. And sometimes so there's something the good time. out of being alone, right? Yeah, I there remember, is positive. Remember one time I went to this uh, Transfiguration Monastery in uh, Malay Balai. I don't know if you know about that place in Bukidnon. You know, there's uh, one day that they will tell you be quiet to uh, just choose any spot in the whole uh, in the whole place, and then uh, you just quietly think and converse with God. So I think that's a nice uh, exercise. If you haven't tried it, maybe you should. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So our slide is okay? Yeah, here we go. Yes, yeah. All right, so I'll go in a little bit by myself. So okay. I'm the founder of Safe and Sound. Or wait, there we go. So I'm Paul Rohr. I'm the founder of Safe and Sound for Mental Health. I'm from Tennessee, USA. I consider myself a good old country boy. I like the outdoors. I like fishing. I grew up hunting, all that stuff. I just like taking walks outside in the woods, which I really miss that. Um, I love my wife and sports and food and learning new things. And uh, just, just uh, I'll share just a few minutes of my, just to talk a little bit about loneliness. That's the subject today. Um, my l little background is that, you know, I shared before I have PTSD. I, I have a lot of symptoms I deal with and so there's been plenty of times in my life where I feel lonely and I think it's very, Betty says this a lot too, but I think it's very important to define how you feel lonely and uh, 
you know, for me, you know, I can be in a group of a, a thousand people and still feel alone. And um, it, there's always, you know, uh, I think nowadays, you know, especially before the pandemic, it's so hard to make friends. It's almost like people, um, it's almost like people don't value that as much anymore. But you know, this is my perspective. So you're, you could be sitting there and you could have totally different perspective and say, oh, well, I disagree with you. My experience has been this and this and this, but this has just been my personal experience. So, you know, I've had to come to grip with what's true about about how I feel, and you know, there is truth that there's friends. It's it's hard to find friendships, but also I need to be grateful for the people I have in my life. Whoever is them, like my family, my wife, my mom, and my dad, my brothers, and, you know, uh, other friends that I have. You know, it might not be a lot, but you know, learning to be grateful for what we have. And then during this time of the pandemic, um, it's very important. Um, I think we are, we're all learning how important human connection is, how important people are. So, you know, I think after this time, who I, we don't know. This is an uncertainty time, so we don't we we don't know what's going to happen. But um, I think whenever this starts to get better, I think a lot of us are going to start uh, realizing how important friendships are and people are. So. Anyway, next slide. So I think firstly, you know, we're going to talk about isolation and loneliness. It's always better to define what we're talking about, right? So even if it's simple words, you already know. Sometimes even with simple words, some definitions will actually tell you stuff you didn't know. So anyway, so isolation, obviously, is the experience of being separated from others. And then we have the word loneliness, which comes from the word alone, being by yourself. So it's being without company. And then the, another word for loneliness is lonesome. So it's sad from being alone. So, you know, it's accurate to say that loneliness can be sort of a, especially lonesome can be a symptom of isolation. But also, you know, Sure, it can come from isolation, but it also can come from from uh, maybe personally you just feel alone a lot, regardless if it's the pandemic or not. So it just uh, depends on the person. So next slide. So there is this BBC, so loneliness before the pandemic. So BBC did a loneliness experiment about two, year, two years ago, 2018, and then they interviewed about uh, 55,000 people online. And so out of those 55,000, the, between the ages of 16 and 24, 40% of those people said they felt alone. And then if you see in the middle, like the average is about 33% average of everybody. Uh, if you notice, 75 plus is 27%, but that's not necessarily accurate because this was online. So you can mm -hmm. accurately assume that there's probably a lot of older people who are not online. So I would think that 27% in reality is actually higher. Mm -hmm. So this 33% now during the pandemic, I mean, this is, sorry, before the pandemic. So you could definitely say it's a lot, lot worse than 33% now. So mm -hmm. next slide. Actually, I think the older the older people, I think you you wouldn't also have an accurate number. It's because a lot of them have uh, dementia. So uh, yeah, but it's interesting to note that uh, a lot of the young people have uh, so a lot of the young people feel isolated. Yeah, that's very true. So this is isolation during the pandemic. So. Approximately 80% of the population is isolated mm -hmm. as of April 2020. Mm -hmm. So this was still some time ago. So you could definitely say it's a lot worse than 80%. If you notice, the United States 84%. Yeah. But now mm -hmm. in the United States, the pandemic has gotten them way worse. So you could definitely mm -hmm. say it's, it's it's worse than that. And it doesn't say on here, but Vietnam is at 89%. So. Mm -hmm. 
it's probably better to compare yourself to another Asian country, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Next slide. So I would like mm -hmm. to read this quote first. And um, this pandemic is a disaster of uncertainty. And the greater the uncertainty surrounding the disaster, the greater the psychological casualties. This comes from George Everly. He is a professor at John, John Hopkins University. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you notice, just, just FYI, I have references uh, on the, mm -hmm. I got this orb, so you can see that at the lower right corner. Um, mm -hmm. So the contributing, you know, it's interesting, he said, the greater the psychological casualties. I mean, it's definitely something that quotes, definitely something to ponder. Uh, you know, when we're uncertain about things, we're anxious, we're depressed, mm -hmm. we're so many things. It's just so many contributing factors, and that's what we're going to talk about, contributing mm -hmm. factors to our mental health. So the first, I mean, there's more than five, I'm sure, but this is just, this is just uh, good to start with. So um, contributing factors to our mental stress. So the first is significant job loss, and this is more mm -hmm. on a global scale. You know, it's different mm -hmm. we're talking about on a personal scale. We're talking more on a global scale. So job loss, um, and this is an American statistic. So 70% of all Americans compared with 46% in 2019. So 70% of all Americans have experienced job loss mm -hmm. and compared to just 46% in 2019. And then the unemployment rate, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, says it's 23.1 million people are unemployed in America. Uh, this is according to April 2020, so you can only assume it's worse. And then given the Philippine perspective, you know, I couldn't find any stats, but I'm sure it's really bad here, too. We could only assume. Yeah. But I think um, the Filipinos are more resilient because, uh, well, it came as a as a text joke, but I think it's really true that Filipinos, a lot of them, had converted themselves into like uh, they would sell anything that they can. Uh, they'll be able to put their hands on, like they can cook and then they sell. So actually, uh, a lot of my sales have done that during the pandemic when we were on lockdown. So they would cook and then they would sell to their neighbor. Like that. So they survive. And uh, maybe that's how Filipinos are. Well, I think it's very important to say that, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, Philippines has a history of, of, of fighting, actually. Like it's mm -hmm. uh, martial art, like Cali, you know, in the 17, <laughs> what was it, 1500s. The, they're, actually, the Filipino warriors fought off the Spanish the first time the Spanish mm -hmm. came here. So there's actually really a history of, of resilience here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Survivors. Survivors, yeah. Survivors, yeah. Survivors. Mm -hmm. Important to recognize that. So, and then our second is the government response, which I'm not gonna get in the government talk. That's not <laughs> why I'm here. I think we can, uh, that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, mm -hmm. So you see it. You, you can tell people stresses by online. We kind of have that uh, advantage nowadays. So online, you know, you, you're getting a, a lot of people with uh, that are complaining about the government and, and about the president and about a lot of certain things, which I'm personally not going to get involved in that. But, um, yeah, that definitely will – I mean, people are dealing with personal issues, and then they're dealing with job loss. They're dealing with the government response. They're anxious. They don't know uh, how things are going to get better. They don't think their own government's doing a good job. So it's just a lot of pressure for people. So then number three, the rise and display of clinical anxiety and depression. So um, this is interesting stat. One-third – this is also an American – statistic. One third of Americans have displayed clinical signs of anxiety and depression. One third. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so I, I think that it would be lower probably for the Philippines. For Filipinos. Um, yeah, for Filipinos, because Filipinos, they can just sing and dance the time away. So true, uh, said, we're more resilient, right? So uh, yeah, maybe 
Not one eight? <laughs> yeah, we, we don't know. But, you know, it's also important to recognize that that's also, you know, how the culture of America would deal with stress is probably different than a Filipino would. So mm -hmm. um, just because somebody here is happy doesn't mean that they're actually happy, right? So mm -hmm. there's also that perspective as well. So we just, it's always good to be aware just because of one of our friends is really happy all the time doesn't mean that they're they're yeah. good. Like my personal yeah. experience, and I'm talking personal experience, there's times where I seem so happy and I have so much energy and I'm off the walls, but actually that's negative. I'm not normally like that. So mm -hmm. when I'm like that, it's also, it's actually kind of a warning sign. That's how I'm Some coping. So. Sometimes people put up a false front, you know. They will appear, they're happy, but deep inside they're crying. Yes, true. Very true. So number four, not comfortable discussing mental health issues. So I got a stat, and this is about employees in America. So I didn't, I didn't find a stat people in general, but this is employees in America. So only 50% of employees in America are comfortable discussing mental health issues. So 50% um, actually, correct me if I'm wrong, Betty, 50% um, actually in, in, in the Philippines is high, right? I mean, like yeah. coming from mm -hmm. that perspective, it's like, oh, 50%, that's actually pretty high. In American perspective, because we're so, um, we're more out, we're vocal about things. 50% mm -hmm. may be low. But but I, think I think probably it will be more or less the same here. Because the same. Okay. Uh, Filipinos, okay. we also do not like discussing mental health issues. Yes. Because it's mm -hmm. a, um, uh, you know, you will be so ostracized. You'll be, uh, yeah, you'll be mocked. You'll be mocked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, in that aspect, I think probably it's the same as uh, the americas yeah even Very for nice. even for not even mental health issues sometimes for ordinary health issues some people just want to keep them mm -hmm. you know keep their True. problem to themselves right yeah. but, uh, well, well it's uh i but personally i believe that uh you know you can tell people about your problem except that you just ask the experts that's why right. it's good to ask people who know because you cannot just go asking anybody, any friend you know. Because uh, if more people will give you different advices, then I think you end up with, you know, not being able to come up with a solution. Well, you end up freezing. You don't know how to mm -hmm. problem solve anymore. You're just dealing with so much in your yeah. head. So. It, you, it becomes more complicated than you are confused. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was reading an article and this was on Forbes, mm -hmm. and the um, you know, article was really saying how important it is for uh, businesses to come up with ideas to better support their employees because so many of their employees are are really going through stuff mentally, and mm -hmm. um, so it'd be really good for businesses to come up with unique ideas to be making sure these these uh, employees are being supported, and then also not judge if they they come out with. With struggling mm -hmm. with these issues so i think overall it's important to just have that attitude of we're just here to support you we don't judge you it's understandable why you would be feeling this way you know it's a very natural mm -hmm. response to something like this mm -hmm. um yeah. so moving on for, yeah for right. business i think it has to be a two-way process wherein yeah. uh, the employers will be more understanding of their employees but in the same manner, the employee should also be able to appreciate what the employer does for them. You know, mm. it's a time wherein uh, both sides have to make the most of everything so that we can all survive. Because, yeah, uh, yeah especially for business, we do not know, you know, because uh, you never know. You, probably by year end, you might just be closing shop because of all the problems that will come in. Yeah. Yeah, so um, anyway, but if both the employer and employee, they uh, help each other out, I think, uh, I think, um, yeah, we have a pretty good uh, picture of what the future will be. Yeah, um, it's just kind of like a safety net. I mean, if people come up, if they come out and tell their businesses that they're struggling, 
at least the businesses can have uh, some kind of plan on what to do. I think that's mm -hmm. always important. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, moving on, uh, number five, one in five people have physical reactions when thinking about the pandemic. So physical reactions <laughs> meaning they have a stomach ache, they have a headache, uh -huh. um, Psychosomatic illnesses, we call them. Yeah, yeah, Miss Betty, you're the you're the one that definitely <laughs> know about this stuff. <laughs> so, is there anything you want to add to that, Miss Betty? Well, um, no, I, I think it's true that yeah, people have physical reactions, but then uh, there's always uh, there's always two ways of uh, resolving it because it. If there is a physical manifestation, then the doctors would always want to prescribe a medicine, right? Because it right. helps also. I always say that because for me, like I'm in the wellness industry, I always say that I would still depend on the doctor first and then we supplement. But then it's at the end of the day, it's still up to you to solve it, to find the root cause. Now, if right. you are, if you find out that, like for example, as it is, if you find out that oh your your acidic stomach is caused by stress, then you can lessen the problem by uh, removing or minimizing the stress. It's all about the mental health. Actually, it's what the mind thinks. It's remember we always say it's mind over matter. So uh, always in any illness, the first uh, the first thing we have to discuss is really how the mind will adapt. How the mind, the, the very first thing is the mindset, the mindset thing. The person should think that I can get well. So, but if you always think that you cannot get well, then it's a vicious cycle that the more, the more sure. you think about it, the more you don't get well. But yeah. uh, that's the very first thing, even for not even for mental, even for regular uh, other illnesses. The first thing is mindset. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy you're discussing this because the mind really is very, very powerful. Mm, yeah, hey, it's, it's interesting you mentioned the stomach because there are studies that uh, having good stomach health can be linked to mental health and having bad stomach health can be linked to like depression mm -hmm. and anxiety and stuff. So yeah. yes. that's important uh -huh. to have that understanding. So maybe sometimes mm -hmm. we just treat it symptom by symptom, you know, mm -hmm. if we're if we're feeling sad and we also are having acidic problems and we deal with that stomach problem and then see how our health is. And if we're still having the same problems, then we, uh, we just go step by step, you know? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. You can do some diag there. There are diagnostic tools anyway, to find out if there's yeah. really a physical, uh, physical problem behind what you're right. feeling. Uh -huh. It also could be thyroid problems too, right? Thyroid mm -hmm. problems can be linked to depression as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not always a simple thing, right? I mean, these yeah. problems we're talking about are actually, you know, pretty complex. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, well, uh, the medical field has uh, uh, defined a mental illness as a disease. Unlike before, they would say, "Oh, it's just psychological," but now uh, they have uh, they have found out that. Uh, I don't know if it's the effect or it's the cause, but they have found out that uh, people who are uh, who are uh, depressed they have uh, low uh, low serotonin levels. So that mm. one that can be tested the serotonin level. Right. So uh, and uh, well, the mind is really something very complex. So we mm. are still in the initial stages of. Uh, yeah, it is actually very interesting because uh, even thousands of years of existence, it's proven that doctors still don't know a lot about the mind, right? They're still yes, learning right. about the mind. Uh -huh. that's yes, pretty, that's correct. That's pretty, that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. But still, so, I think you have, um, you have some uh, <clears throat> suggestions on what to do if uh, people have... Uh, you know these mental problems yeah that's that's towards the that's towards the end so oh, anyway we'll, okay. move, we'll move to the next slide uh, okay yeah so 
this is interesting. I just wanted to share this. So there's this poker player. His name's Rich Alati. He's not very famous. It's hard to find him on, on YouTube. But, uh, he He's a poker player that bet $100,000 that he could survive 30 days in total darkness. Mm -hmm. So I found that very interesting. So he had all the resources he needed. He had a refrigerator. He had a bathtub. He had food. He had everything he needed. And within day three, he was all he was all he was already hallucinating. And the reason why you start hallucinating is because the brain is a very social brain, and it's a learning brain, and it always needs to learn things. Like if you notice in your everyday life, you're always doing something. Right? You're always thinking about doing something. Even if you're lazy, you're still doing something. You're probably watching Netflix because uh, your, your brain is interested. You know? So without that, without that uh, stim they call it stimulation. Without that stimulation in your head, then no stimulation. There's nothing to talk about. Uh, then you're left in your own thoughts. So the brain... Uh, it's so bored and it's actually interesting that the level of boredom is is actually like it goes boredom and then it goes I saw this it goes boredom and it goes disgust and then it goes loathing so after you feel boredom you can feel a level of disgust so you can be so bored that it's painful and it, there's a very interesting thing I found out you know I was watching this YouTube video about this uh, about this experiment and so what they did is they had this electric button they had these people come in and they didn't know it's an experience and they and they had this electric button and they said okay push this button so these people pushed the button and of course it shocked them so this one person said oh this this really sucks like I don't want to do this anymore I'm never doing this again so anyway they put that same person in a room alone for 30 minutes with that button so he was Within five minutes, he was already touching the button. He said he would never touch it again. So mm -hmm. It's very interesting that at times we're so bored, we, we actually rather feel pain than deal with our full boredom. So you can only imagine what this guy was going through. Uh, you know, how depressed he got, how lonely he was, how, how paranoid he got. Uh, the brain will start making things up. It just wants to find stuff interesting. So it starts making things up. And he said he saw like bubbles in the room and he saw the stars mm -hmm. in the sky. And that was just the, bra the brain's way of, of giving him something interesting. So uh, anyway, he ended up losing the bet and mm -hmm. he, left, he lost, he left within 20 days. He quit mm -hmm. 20 days. It's amazing. It lasted 20 days. <laughs> He uh, lost sixty-four thousand two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. We just think just two more days. I mean, of course, he has no—he has no conception of time. Doesn't know what time it is. He has mm -hmm. actually it's proven when people are put in rooms like this that mm -hmm. they—they they think it's a lot shorter than it actually is, or they think it's a lot longer than it actually is. Mm -hmm. They have no way of telling time. They totally just—it's—they're just so confused. Mm -hmm. They're brain mm -hmm. tricks on them. So anyway, so let's move on mm -hmm. to the next slide. I think Just, yeah. We, let's take. Uh, are we going to finish up the two? Uh, yeah, maybe the best would be let's finish up the two slides. Then let's take a gap. Then when we come back, we'll be having Aya on in the. Okay. In the okay. Yeah, I can. I can finish those pretty fast. Okay. So. Okay. Is it? Oh, yeah. This is the next slide, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, how does isolation affect your mental health? So you're less able to deal with stressful situations. You know, you get caught up in these emotions, and then you freeze, and then you, you don't know how to think. Uh, you, the the normal things you can normally do. Two, you feel you're more likely to feel depressed. Um, so yeah, you're more likely to feel depressed. And then number three, you may have problems process processing info. Um, mm -hmm. You're it's it's really uh, similar. You know, you're dealing with 
stressful situations, you feel depressed, and then when you're dealing with these emotions, uh, it's hard to be able to decision make, it's hard to find the reality about your situation, so that's why it's also important you have people you can talk to and professionals you can go to, people that can help you, you know, deal with these thoughts and, and stuff in your brain. So number four, may have problems with decision making and memory, which if you notice three and four, it's almost like four comes right after three. So you're having problems processing info, and then after that, you may have problems with decision-making and memory. Mm -hmm. And then number five makes you more susceptible to illness. Mm -hmm. So according to the research I found, researchers found that a lonely person, and this comes, yeah, so this comes from a sciencealert.com. So researchers found that a lonely person's immune systems respond differently to fighting viruses making them unlikely to fighting an illness. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's very interesting. And then number six, it disrupts sleep patterns. Uh, doctors, right, Miss Betty, call it the circadian rhythm, right? That's mm -hmm. a very fancy word, <coughs> word for their 24-hour cycle. So dis disruption to our circadian rhythm can also make us feel depressed and fatigued. This mm -hmm. also has been linked to increased cancer risk, insulin resistance, and heart disease, as well as other physical problems such as obesity and premature aging. Um, so I think it's normal right now during this pandemic that you actually find a lot of people who have messed up sleeping patterns, right? I mean, they're all over the place. They're sleeping during this day, staying up at nighttime. So that's very normal to be going through that right now. And you're also getting less sunlight, which I'll dive into that later. So number seven, you get increased levels in anxiety, panic attacks, and hallucinations in severe cases. So usually with hallucinations, you only will get, usually you only get hallucinations if you don't have uh, stimulus, if you don't have anything that's stimulating, you don't have any books to read. If you're totally alone, all by yourself, nothing to do, then that's uh, hallucinations can be uh, normal in that setting. But in our setting, I, I wouldn't think it would be very normal. So anyway, let's move on. Mm -hmm. So here we go. How to cope with isolation and loneliness. And these are just brief descriptions. You know, you can always add to it. So of course you need human connection. Um, very important. Actually, people find, find, and these are extreme cases of being isolated, but I found people who are travelers who get who end up all alone, you know, in the Amazon or in Africa, wherever they are, they say that the worst part about it is, is, not, uh, is not the place itself, it's not starving, it's not a lot of things, it's actually the human connection that they miss the most. So that's very interesting. So anyway, with that said, it's very important that we have some sort of human connection. I know all we have is is, is internet and, and stuff, but you know, and like I was sharing earlier, I have a group that I do with teenagers every week, and you know, they said that it's helped them just having people they can talk to every week. So, you know, you can do that in your own life. If you have a set of friends, you can come up with an idea to talk to them once every Thursday, once every Friday, or whatever, and. Uh, you definitely can see differences just in that, and there's a there's a lot of unique ideas, uh, which you know we can talk about that in the group conversation for the sake of time. So find something. Number two is find something to ground your emotions. Um, so that can be like journaling, that can be meditation, that can be things like prayer, whatever whatever belief systems you're into. Uh, Self awareness exercises like mindfulness exercises music, uh, some people like video games. Um, it's just make sure that what you're doing, you, you're not sad, you're not angry, it just levels out your emotions. So like for me, I have to be careful with video games. I'm not playing something I'm gonna lose and I'm just gonna get more angry. So we also need to be aware of what we're doing. So it, it's different for everybody. You know, some people, like for me, I like taking walks. That can help me be grounded. I know in Manila that can be hard to do. So we kind of in our own way find up with created, creative ideas that give us peace. Like some people really, art can be a really good idea. Even if you're not good at it, 
abstract painting is good for people who don't know how to do art. You know, mm -hmm. just, just put in colors however you feel and, and touch it and feel it and observe it and stuff like that. So, um, and then number three, find something that gives you purpose. Like for me, the fact that I get to talk to people and I get to help them process through things and be a friend to them and, and uh, help them through this journey, um, I think it's, um, it's been very important for me. So it's important to find your own uh, purpose. So then number four, get sunlight. Um, sunlight's very important. Um, there's two of the key mechanisms for sleep regulation, the m m hormone melatonin and the brain. Uh, it's a big word. I'm not trying to say that. Both rely <laughs> on light function. So if you don't have light function, you can naturally feel depressed. You can feel anxious. So even if it's 20, 30 minutes a day. And then number six, have a proper understanding of your personal mental state. Uh, like I said, there's a, a lot of different uh, reasons why you could be struggling. It can be different for everyone. So that's just kind of your own journey to talk to somebody and kind of figure out what you're going through and not judge yourself and be understanding to your circumstance what you're going through. So, uh, and then number seven is have positive outlet, outlets for your negative thoughts and emotions. You know, like I said before, uh, when things get really dark, I don't care how dark it is. You know, just to be real, even if you're thinking about violent thoughts and really, really bad, dark thoughts, it's very important that you have an outlet you can talk to about that, um, a safe outlet. So it's very important that you're getting this stuff out. So, yeah, anyway, I'll end with that. <laughs> yeah, anyway, there's a lot okay. that you would well, like to yeah, I know for a second time um, I like to correct. So. No, it's, it's, it's okay, okay, bro. It's okay. Uh, no problem about it's that. Good we will just yeah. have to take a break, Muna. Then uh, we'll be back. We can talk about diet, exercise, because you know it's we're up to we're uh, our goal is to be a holistic approach. So uh, you know we have already found out that you know the mind and the physical physical they go together you cannot be healthy uh, you cannot have a healthy body without a healthy mind so yeah. and uh, of course our guest also also said that she's fine uh, to have an overtime <laughs> so, uh, let's just take a break uh, just to you know have a quick quick uh, drink of water so and uh, hold on let's play this uh, quick commercial break We'll be back. Go away. gusto mong juice? Ang gusto ko, veggie juice kasi. Gusto juice, gusto ng lahat. Ang veggie juice na mapasigla ng katawan. Nasa gusto na ang lahat. May gulay na, may prutas pa. Ito na na ang sustansya. Vitamin ay kompleto. Ikaw ma, gusto mo? Uminom na. Isang baso ng sustansya Kompletong sigla para sa ating pamilya Gusto Veggie Juice, your yummy veggie drink No approved therapeutic claims This is just a quick break <laughs> Are you able to drink water? You can't even include uh, I know or just have to finish up first uh, You have the tips muna Before we bring in our special tips But mm -hmm. so well, anyway now, kasi I just got interested in what Paul Was talking about First about the sleep Okay uh the sleep patterns uh yeah because he was talking about the circadian rhythm um from an from an alternative point of view uh we believe also in the biorhythmic clock of our own physical body because we are born uh, at different times so as you can see some people can make it in a call center while some people will fall sick so well god is good he created us to different ways to uh so that we will survive the 24 hours so uh but that's for another discussion but as i said uh, there, is a, there is a way to us. but that is also very important because people who do not sleep 
will always end up having a mental problem, right? And then talking about food, uh, well, exercise, of course, is uh, it's a given that you have to exercise. Although they say that you shouldn't be exercising three hours before you sleep, uh, more uh, you should exercise more than three hours before you sleep because otherwise you will also end up feeling, uh, you know, stimulated that you will not be able to sleep. And then talking about food during isolation, you know, this is so, uh, you know, I like food. I like to eat. I like seafood. When I see food, I eat. So uh, I remember in my younger days, you know, uh, I would I would love munching on those potato chips. So like, for example, when we're studying and I, I also noticed that in uh, my employees, it like when it's afternoon time, they would be munching on something. But then... Uh, well, maybe because uh, we want to get over the stress in the brain. Because like if we are working the whole day, then it stresses our brain, right? Because we have used a lot of our brain uh, the brain fluids or brain sugar. Uh, we depend on our comfort food. If we're going into isolation, you would like to our comfort food. We feel happy, right? But then there's a way to have healthy comfort food. And I think... Uh, you know, like people can have chocolates because chocolates uh, make you uh, calm. It calms you down. Do you know that, uh, you know, when there's a meeting, like there's a board meeting and then you feel that people will be quarreling or you put, uh, you put a lot of uh, chocolates on the table so that uh, people will calm down. And then uh, I think uh, nuts is also good. It's also a good, healthy food. Although for people like us, who are, we have uh, some uh, problems with our teeth, we might not be able to eat a lot of nuts. And then, uh, of course, the way to be healthy is to try to look for low-carb low food. Because uh, unless, uh, unless you have used the brains too much that you need carb to think, the energy to think, then uh, low-carb food would be uh, better. So uh, I think it also helps in reducing the loneliness or isolation that you feel. And uh, but fish can uh, be important, food, right? Huh? Right now, like fish is fish is really important, right? I mean, fish yeah. can be very good, and vitamin D fish, as well. Yeah. Fish is a good source of protein, a, a mm -hmm. source of fish oil, omega three six nine. Uh, uh, and then, uh, but I think what you can do is, but of course, some we, you know, Filipinos have a sweet tooth, so we we, we prefer carbs, right? But the balance carbs with protein. So maybe when you have a, maybe when you have a sandwich, you have bread, so you can have fish as the. As the palaman, you know, the, the thing that's going to go inside your sandwich so that it balances out. So it comes out still a healthy one. So, but of course, since they were in the wellness, the we always say that if you can change your diet, you change your digestion. So we offer our 15 biota probiotics. Okay, it's a shameless plug <laughs> of our uh, wellness products. But that's the way to do it. Uh, all problems. We just have to try to find what we can do because, uh, of course, we some people they cannot control what they eat, but uh, we cannot make it as a stumbling block to what we would like to achieve. So that's why we offer our wellness supplements. And uh, as I've said initially, still the best thing is still a good mindset. And uh, with the exercise, we we always say that with the exercise it. We sweat, that's one. We sweat, so uh, it releases some of the energies that we have inside us, so it balances our well-being. So having said that, water is a very important factor. So uh, even for people who feel isolated, you know, uh, drinking water, not wine, <laughs> I, I, I feel that, you know, I don't know why a lot of the young people, they like to... To, to drink wine 
Uh, but uh, well, in a pandemic, I think that's okay. But as long as after you drink, then uh, just don't intoxicate yourself, or you'll 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 end up having trouble with some people. So uh, yeah, or probably oh, another shame shameless plug. Sorry, yeah. Uh, you can drink gusto vegetable powder juice because the gusto it's a vegetable veggie juice. So when you're a bit you don't feel when you feel down, you need energy or you had too much to drink, then you have to rehydrate yourself and the gusto is very good and uh it it, it helps you more because it is better than just plain water and there are nutrients in that drink. So, uh, Paul, so through your experience before, or maybe we would like to bring in Ayan uh, already, uh, Raymond. Yes, yes. So, we all have to share, so both of them can share their personal experiences. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay, with the, with the presentation, or you'll just wrap up later all together, Paul. Well, we're yeah. done with I'm I'm done with the presentation. All um, right, all good. So let's welcome our special guest. Hi, uh, Aya. Hello, Hi, Aya. Aya. <laughs> hello. Finally, it's oh, it's already one o'clock. But the good thing about well, good that I think Aya is not busy today, <laughs> or <laughs> all of us are not busy today. Well, you know, with uh, the pandemic. <laughs> time management. <laughs> So, we're on the topic today is isolation, but I know from our discussion this morning uh, in the chat that you have a different experience with isolation. So, well, uh, it, it might be a surprise for some, but for people like, you know, artists and uh, open-minded people of course we, uh, we it's not it's not it's not abnormal to, to have something you know something like that experience so uh, can you tell us uh, your personal experience uh, with isolation yeah. I know this might come as a surprise because we actually I was surprised with this morning but after thinking about it well, yeah, that's a good uh, another another angle, another way of looking at it and applying it, especially when there we are now compelled or uh, we are obliged to just stay at home. Well, I, I think it's it's important to have other perspectives because this could totally just go dark, you know. So it's it's good to have perspectives like Aya, so we can be told that hey, it's it's not all bad. So it's good. Um. So I think Aya can tell her story first. Maybe, um, let me, it, it was just a moment in my life when um, I realized a lot of things. Uh, the unique moment happened just so suddenly. And I, all of a sudden I have really important questions I needed to answer about myself, which is, you know, who, who are you? What do you like at once? in life and are you happy and are you happy at this point and, or are you on your way to happiness and do you know the way so aside from of course the path of faith is not exactly uh, a smooth one um there, there will always be you will always be challenged by something you know and i think that's the walk of faith that's what faith is all about but it was during that time when i realized i was living a life living living a life that is not mine um it was a response based on a traumatic childhood experience wherein my response was to please other people was to always seek a few words from other people and uh, it has gone really so deep that I needed to undo everything. So I realized uh, the, the liberty that I that I that I had when when I was able to embrace the fact that I'm a private person and that I'm 
but I'm pretty much okay with solitude. Uh, but I'm, but I find peace with um, or with peace and order. You know, a very predictable and routine life. Uh, I don't. I don't mind not having too much continuity, or I don't. I don't like uncalculated risks. Uh, I like order. I like order. I like sense. I like beauty. I like sophistication. I like uh, yeah. So uh, when I decided to honor that myself, I started curating everything. Everything I I touched and I, everything I. I read, I listened to, uh, I I limited uh, exposure to to things that you know could just possibly waste my time and not not really give me enough learnings. So yeah, there was a, of course there was a there was a struggle because. Uh, in the middle of unpacking these things, of course, you have to have a balance between uh, knowing who your tribe is and knowing, knowing who are the people or who are what are who are the people, what are the things that you need in your life, you know. And uh, so I tackled nutrition, I tackled sleep, I tackled. Uh, to call this, uh, I tackled yes, curating my life and being able to put boundaries like who am I, who am I going to let let in my life or let stay, uh, who do I allow to influence my my decisions or influence my thoughts, my train of thought. So I'm very, very careful with that. I'm not a very impressionable. I'm not an impressionable person anymore. Like uh, I always seek science as um, uh, as a basis for science and logic. It's a basis for how things are or how things should be. And, uh, I trust that more than old wives' tales or passed on. You know, when somebody tells me, "Oh, you have to take this because you, you know, it's going to, it's going to help you remember things or, or, or whatever." I, I don't, I don't easily trust. So whatever I see on the news or whatever I see, on, I, it's always subjected to inquiry. I always try to find the root or uh, a good, at least a good, reliable source. My mind is always in overdrive, thinking whether the thing presented to me, the thing presented before me, is true or not. So that kind of takes a toll on me. That's why isolation for me is a sense of safe, safe space. It's a safe space. That I can distance myself from externals. Remember, I had a past wherein I took the, all the externals in and factored it in. But you know, I changed my hair so many times. I dressed a certain way, I talked a certain way. So many times. I mean, it, it's during the time it was maybe it was fun because it was it was like you can be anything you want. You can be yeah. anyone you want, really, and you think that's freedom. But I realized, in my case, that the, the true freedom is a sense of discipline and self mastery in oneself. So that mm -hmm. that really that really grounded my sense of purpose. It, it illuminated the path that said, "Oh, here's here's where where you should go. This make this is your purpose in life." And little did I know that I was going to be a mom. And I was going to be an educator as well, educator for my for my for my daughter. Meaning mm -hmm. it was something that I that I I never thought I would take up naturally. It wasn't something that I would 
no matter how this it wasn't really something in the in the cloud of my head or in the cloud mm -hmm. anywhere near, near the vicinity of my thoughts so you know i even you know i re even remember the time when i because i had hung out with different kinds of people that um when i was younger um in order to please certain group uh i had to hide the fact that i had a good education or i was having a good education that i was in a school that was top year i i was actually i was actually ashamed of that because mm -hmm. everybody else around me thought i was being elite or mm -hmm. and the time we're in when i did speak english which was my comfortable language um to to, to speak my thoughts out and, you know and so it was because i needed to be a certain group of people and little did i know that had i continued doing that then i would probably live a life that, <laughs> that um it's not probably i wouldn't be a citizen that that would be of more benefit to this nation right mm -hmm. i mean rather than having to having to deny that you're smart or at least informed or have the ability to well -informed. so now i could stand on that confidently and i could i could just walk away from things that will tell me otherwise that will shame me so i'm through the course of it all i was able to say I'm okay with rejection. I'm okay with um, not being part of every single group that I encounter. Like there's there's something like genuine acceptance from from people who truly care about you or from people who really speak your language at least. Or you can you can meet halfway or you can see eye to eye on at least most issues. And even if you don't um, somebody like people that you can that, that you can have, that, that you can disagree, that you can agree to disagree with, and still have that, have that enormous respect for the so, other person. So, Aya, it was like a rejection that forced you into isolation, right? It's not only, it's not only that. It's a, it's a uh -huh. complex web of things. It's a mm -hmm. complex web of things wherein it's, it's being lost in a place where, where you're you have given yourself so much to a great number of people mm -hmm. then trying to imbibe every single thing that they need you to do mm -hmm. okay trying to, yeah. trying to fit in uh -huh. so, so by expectations yeah. of people it's like you you cannot yeah, that's right uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah because i uh, feel, was, feel yeah, because she was the popular a uh, singer or songwriter with a band that really became popular, you know, like, you know, the typical rock star thing that people, oh, you have to be like this, you know, to live this image. That's why it came to a point, no, uh, yeah, you said, if I heard it right, that you had to hide your education, your being in this. No, no, no. Uh, it was, uh, th those, those things had happened in my childhood. When I became, I when, I, okay. uh, when, I, when I fell into became that, the, and wrote songs and, and, and stuff, uh, the public wasn't really the problem. It was the people around me. Like, oh. you know, I kept on because I needed their approval and I need, needed their friendship, probably. Their, you know, I needed anchors because in my childhood, I didn't have any. So, yeah. so during my adulthood, it's that. So, uh, of course, it was a. It was a yeah. There's also a confusing, a confusing stage where, when you know, um, it's not like your rock star stories. I mean, but the rock star, oh. the rock star mm -hmm. thing, the thing is great. It's maybe, maybe I just don't like the industry because, of course, when when there's people, there's politics. But music itself, it's really good. Like, it's good to write songs. Mm -hmm. it's, good to, it's good to. Yeah, it's good to learn songs, music is good, music is healing and all of that, you know. Uh, fans are great, fans are, 
the two friends are, are, are very kind and very polite. They are, they are, uh, they're still around and, you know, they're, they're very supportive. So I have no, I have no problems with that. And they don't, they're not, uh, they're so, they're so great because um, they, they reach out but I don't feel like they're invading my space. They're very kind. So I, I answer them, I, I'm open to them. And in that regard, and, uh, I respond to their messages. Uh, we, have, we have healthy exchanges every now and then. So uh, it's, that. It's, mostly, uh, it's mostly people have a high opinion about themselves uh, or, or, or probably uh, you know, some things that are out of our control. Mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, I I must admit, I, I I will have to be very very honest that I am I am not in total agreement with, with everything that's happening here and around the world. So that is sort of like a, an offense to 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 the things that I believe in. So uh, that. Uh, so parang ano, there are contradictions yes. within yourself, di ba? Parang gano, that's why you feel na, okay, this, this is not working out, something like that, right? So, or do you yes. feel that you are very different from other people? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh -huh. I have uh -huh. been, I've been called out for the person to be deeply, for, uh -huh. for going down the rabbit hole. I've been called out for, for being... For being too, too passionate about certain things, why can't uh, I be a normal Filipino and we can just, you know, mm -hmm. we can just laugh at things and you know, just take it easy and you know. Uh, but then that is, but then that is still perception, but right? It's your personal perception, Ama. No, it was said to me. It yeah. said to me. It was, so what happened after that? How were you able to resolve the issues of your life? Um, That's a complicated question, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's so simple. Because we're still solving issues. I'm still solving issues in my life. It's, it's hard. Okay, so it's Very a hard. continuous effort to solve the different issues. Yeah, right? Absolutely. absolutely. We are all a work in progress. It comes to stages. As, I, as I've always said, one, one thing that I realized is that um, forgiveness. I came across the topic of forgiveness and I always ask, why do I need to forgive? And then I realized, I realized that people go through seasons, just pretty much like my plants. So they go through two seasons of knowing and not knowing. Mm -hmm. So as we unpack ourselves and as we re rebuild ourselves, uh, there are things that we need to shed and consider as mistakes or things that we need to reacquire and say, oh, that used to be a mistake, but I feel so wrong about it now. So it's a season, people are always in a season of something. So to, to consider somebody so, so or to have arrived at a, at a complete solution is, is, uh, I, is something that's very far from very far from my thoughts or very far from how I view life. Meaning, yes, you can arrive at certain milestones yeah. in your life that say, that you say, okay, I've overcome this. I've overcome mm -hmm. this and this and this and that. But for me, right. it's been in stages. Like, uh, for example, I have found peace and, and balance in an environment wherein I put boundaries, number one. So I put boundaries about who I let, let in and who whose opinion I listen to. So a balance with that as well was um, to spend more time, spend more quality time with the things that I like doing. Uh, I'm in the plants, and now it's become a business. So spending time with the plants, um, learning learning a lot about, about their growth and their development and their needs and their style and stuff. And we also sell vegetables online in our in the village. <laughs> yes, we've got survival skills. Yes, yeah, life skills. So at various times, I would pick up the guitar and just come away. And then uh, I have 
So I've curated my life in a way that uh, I can, I have pockets of social life with people that I trust or I, at least I can navigate with, I can navigate life with. And then uh, I also have social life with fans or followers. Then I also have social life with friends. And then I, I have social life with, you know, with, with my family. Yeah, uh, just here. But I'm pretty much uh, getting to that balance of, of a routine and, uh, and a structure in life pretty set me, set me in a place where it's, it's peaceful, it's, um, what do you call it, it's at least ordered. Like my inner so, life is ordered. Yeah. I, I have this question. Maybe it's both for Paul and Aya to answer. Would I be correct in saying that uh, the way to deal with the problem is to set our goals? Because uh, when it comes to uh, time for decision making, it will always have to revert back to where to what goals we would want in life, right? And then uh, and another coping tool would be to learn to prioritize, prioritize what we want to achieve, so that our we we put some focus, to, we, we try to put some focus in our life, so that uh, there's a you know we we would know how to deal with each because well any like for us uh, every day is a struggle every day we have a problem that would crop up but then it's uh, also a, but we have to we have to live every day right so uh, so i think it's more of like they, they they always say you have to live in the now you have to focus and direction and uh, learn to prioritize. I don't know if uh, that would help you in how you deal with life. Uh, so maybe Paul can make an answer yeah. first. Yeah. Um, just like earlier, this this is complicated. Um, <laughs> like for me, I have I have some some issues. I have post traumatic stress disorder, and um, if you if you're interested about that, you can look it up for the sake of time. <laughs> but uh, so pretty much. Um, I struggle a lot with anxiety, uh, some paranoia. Um, so when you're talking about goals, it's not, it, it's kind of complicated because it's not as simple as like, for me, like part of having one of the problems I have, I get scared super easy. Like I can't control it. Like somebody grabs me on the shoulder. I'm already doing a martial arts move on them. Like I'm hitting their hand away or something, I'm not hitting them. But like, it's just a reaction. Like, it's really hard for me to control that. It's just uh -huh. the same like response. It's like someone scaring you and telling you, "Hey, don't be scared." It's it's uh -huh. not that. It, it doesn't work that yeah, way. It's, so it's not that easy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, there's some goals that like for me to say, "I'm not going to get scared anymore." That's probably unrealistic. Uh -huh. So like, we have to have realistic goals. Okay. So what's realistic for me? So. If I have a problem going outside, well, now this is this complicated because of the whole coronavirus thing. So we have to we have to discern how can we go outside. Okay, so walking out in the street is not a very good idea. Okay, so what is the next thing we can do that's better than going out in the street? So let's go outside by our garden, or go outside in a pool area, or somewhere where 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 we're safe from the virus and stuff. And, so we're make little steps. So like, for example, if somebody's scared of, like if you're having anxiety, like you're so pinned up with your anxiousness, you don't even want to go outside at all. Then you're, you're thinking about realistic steps, like little small steps you can do that are realistic. So like baby steps. So you think in matter of goals, like what are some very achievable goals that I can mm -hmm. do? So, mm -hmm. so it's basically, Having goals, <laughs> still having goals. Yeah. Right. Yeah, having goals, but having achievable goals, having yes. realistic, uh -huh. goals. realistic goals, as you say. Yeah, depending mm -hmm. on what you struggle with, what you go through. Yeah, uh -huh. like I also would like to add to what I is saying. You know, I, I I very much under her understand her perspective because my perspective, and I'm not saying Aya went through this, but I'm saying me, Paul Roar. Uh, 
I was bullied in school and I, and I went through a lot of traumatic experiences. So mm -hmm. it's very natural that at times I just want to stay inside. I don't want to go out because if I mm -hmm. go outside, there's all these unknowns mm -hmm. I don't know about. So I'm talking about this is even before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, I go outside and I go in a group and then I'm worried that I'm getting get mugged or something. And there's no reason mm -hmm. why someone should mug me. But I'm, I'm so, I can't help thinking about that. So like that's why also you want to stay inside to keep away from danger. So that that is my perspective. So yeah. I see Aya nodding her head vigorously. I, 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 I truly I truly understand. I think this is why Paul and I are friends. It's because yeah. I think oh, we're friends. That's cool. <laughs> it's because I think I found a kindred spirit in him. Like. Um, when I when I first learned about his story and when he first shared with me, I felt like I was the same thing. It was just a different it was just a different way. It was my mind. Which all this time it's like I I'm a like I have all I have these paranoid episodes, I have this I have this um I overthink and I that's what they told me. I overthink. And, you know, it's just that I'm I think I'm wired a different way and I think you know, I respond to things differently. So I'm scared of that, really. I'm, the isolation also is, is because of that. I'm scared of of um, being exposed to people who might not understand it or might not get it. I might not get it. I'm different. So, um, you know, that I might hold very different opinions and think yeah. differently in my thought, my thought process. Right. Um, and I can be very, I can be very assertive. I can, I, can. Direct, and I can be very, yeah, so, you know. I can agree with that, too, because um, just simple reactions from people or facial expressions can yeah, sometimes perfect. upset me. But it's like no reason. It's like, why am I being upset? This is so stupid. But I'm upset, uh -huh. and then you have to deal with that. So, like, yeah. just to be honest, and I'm going to be honest because I think it's important. So, like, going to church for me can be a real trigger. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not saying church is bad, but the social experience there, there's a lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of people around you. There's maybe mm -hmm. there's a certain expectation of how you need to be. So I mm -hmm. feel a lot of pressure and I feel a lot of anxiousness. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. something that, that, that I, I also have to deal with. Mm -hmm. But they always say you can only, you cannot change the person you're talking with or you're dealing with. You can only change your reaction, right? So like it's let's say easy. it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. it's not yeah, that we easy. know no, it's not that easy, but uh, you know, it takes some practice probably to be able to do that. Because if uh, well some because if we always feel that uh, I, I just don't know if uh, like in your experience, uh, uh, do you feel that uh, Sometimes people have bigger, bigger problems or in worse situation than you. So it, you know, it puts, uh, you know, and then you, you feel better because others are not, uh, you know, you, you feel better because you're in a better position than no. the others. No, no, I feel compassionate about people who are undergoing because I am undergoing a certain level of suffering. So uh -huh. I don't wish anybody else that, but, uh, <laughs> What you call this? My reactions to things uh, I cannot control sometimes. I have mm -hmm. to admit that, and with that admission, then for some reason, fifty percent of the time, I'm able to make decisions that uh, that mm -hmm. can protect other people from mm -hmm. from maybe my episodes or or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, it what it really what really really helped was being mindful over. To setting any goal was being aware and aware of what's happening and not mm -hmm. deny. Like because we have this culture here in the Philippines that says ugali mo, that mm -hmm. says ayusin mo yung ugali mo, and I never understood that because you know the only time that I understood it was that when I found out it was a wiring case, a brain wiring case. Or a chemical mm -hmm. balance case. So that could be injustice, that whole toxic culture thing. That mm -hmm. all the while I thought I was a bad person. And I'm here, yeah. one message I'm going to get out there is that if you're experiencing 
having to go through something, please make sure you know we have the we have the we have the tools right now, and we have people right now who you can get in touch with and see. Mm -hmm. Have yourself diagnosed. Have yourself checked first before we, mm -hmm. before we let anyone conclude that it's your ugale, it's your yeah. you know it's your, that's so toxic. That kills yeah, people. True. And I'm saying, yeah. I'm saying this, I'm making a stand right now to say that, you know, awareness is the key to, to being able to deliver yourself from one point to another, to bring yourself to a point yeah. of not knowing and being so lost and being so broken to a place where you can pick yourself up and help yourself up and manage those things. Because you, how can you heal something if you keep on sweeping it under the rug? And saying sure. that you, you know, yeah. just set goals, just set it. No, it's not. It's the awareness and it's the acceptance to say, oh, okay, I'm like this. So what do I do now? So what do I do? Then come, come the goals. Then come the goals. We address, we address the root of the problem first before mm. we address the behavior right. because that's what okay. we want to do. We want to address the behavior because it, it inconveniences everybody else. Mm -hmm. It, it brings inconvenience because it, it, um, it doesn't make anybody feel safe. So we start at yeah. the root so that we can go to a point where everybody can feel safe. So uh, do you think, do you, uh, well, the way I look at it, uh, one, one help would be, uh, of course, they always say is it's spiritual because, uh, you know, when you have faith in God, God is being, God can always help us because uh, God will not, I always say God will not give you a problem you cannot solve. So he will not put you in a certain situation wherein you will always, like Paul, he will not put you in a situation where, wherein you will always be bullied, right? So there yeah. is a there is a solution. It has to stop somehow, somewhere. But uh, my question is, would it help for you if you have a more, uh, active life in service because you know when we do something for other people it helps us overcome our own uh realizations do you think yes. that would be a good i can answer yeah. that i can answer mm. that um with a vegetable business we don't mm. make of it. but yeah. why don't you think it's, good? it's a service that we render to our neighboring to, to our neighbors that mm -hmm. they can serve fresh vegetables mm -hmm. at very low prices mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. delivery fees mm -hmm. it is by the sweat of my husband's back that mm -hmm. these people are able to do that mm -hmm. uh, on, on, on another way uh, on, 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 on another thing where these vegetables come from we, are, we also are able to help people have a little bit of a job, mm -hmm, the starters, mm -hmm. the packers. Mm -hmm. So we know that we are of service. So it's mm -hmm. part parcel of our of our lifestyle, like even with plants. Uh, when we sell plants, we don't leave our we don't leave our 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 clients as orphans. Mm -hmm. We we go through plant care with them, mm -hmm. and that's service beyond the plant, beyond the selling of the plant. My service, my personal service, is a service to my daughter, raising my daughter. That is a service that I do 24-7. So I think my, my life is loaded with service. And it's beyond, so, yeah. beyond anything personal with me anymore. I've come to a point where I have been of service, and I mm -hmm. still do at this, as of this point. So, you know, living a life of service helps us uh, because we feel, uh, you know, no matter how small, it's an achievement that we can yeah. do every day. Yeah. So we are happy. So at the end of the day, it still, it yeah. will still lead us to having a happy life so that we don't feel lonely, we don't feel lonesome, we don't feel uh, isolated. But each one of us has our different uh, ways of coping, right? Yeah. yeah. I so, think uh, also, mm -hmm. if I can add something, I think also what um, Aya is talking about is being wise how you're serving. It's not just mm -hmm. serving 
Um, mm -hmm. Like for me, like in what I do and I talk to people, I have to make personal boundaries for myself. So I have mm -hmm. to be real with myself. Like it, it's just okay for me. So mm -hmm. like, like for some people, it's not wise to do what I do, especially with mm -hmm. some of the problems I have. So yeah. you have to be real about that. But like I was talking about, there's, there's not just one way of serving. Like you don't have to like do political updates on Facebook or you don't have to have these crazy status updates and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like there's ways you can serve without having to be out there. So like you can mm -hmm. come up with really yeah. creative ideas like Aya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot yeah, of just like, just like Aya was saying, she serves her daughter, you know? It's uh, right. still, you know, it's a way of uh, coping. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. I think uh, that's a lot of topic we have tackled today about mental health. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, and I think we have, yeah, uh -huh. so uh, uh, with your organization, how do they get in touch with you again, Paul? Um, you can go on Safe and Sound FMH on Facebook, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and you can message, you can private message us there. And also, uh -huh. we're all on Instagram, uh, uh -huh. Safe and Sound FMH. Safe and so, Sound, oh, okay. FMH. FMH. For FMH. Mental health. Yeah, F and M. Yeah, it's just so long. Say, save and sound for mental health. So, might as well be shorter. So, yeah, there's uh, the page okay. right there. Uh -huh. Save uh -huh. and sound for mental health. Okay. Uh huh. It's good. So, Aya is also a member of F uh, Safe and Sound. Um, um, FMH. I joined the group for the uh -huh. group sessions. So, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, when, when things are a bit and to serve it better, I can serve some more. I, but I serve a certain way, like uh, I connect them with people and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's there. Uh, so in a way, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, how about for your vegetables? Do you have a Facebook uh -huh. page you want to, to share? Uh -huh. You know, a lot of people are doing that because like yeah. in our village, like we help the farmers, a lot of people have approached yeah. us. And uh, yeah, and of course, everybody should eat especially vegetables so uh we yeah. yeah we can help each other out yeah oh uh, well um well I, i'll promote my plants first uh, plant uh -huh. plant uh, okay. Okay. sorry i flushed your other page oh, okay. <laughs> they can also uh -huh. that's for my music anyway so uh, if ever, uh -huh. i do release some music and I'll, that's the first page i'll i'll be posting stuff with so that's my daughter. <laughs> so, uh, oh wow! Uh, yeah. So um, uh, so it's called plantbud.ph. Uh, plant plantbud.ph. Right. Plant. Okay. Plant. Bud. Ph. Okay. Plant bud ph. Okay. So, so you spell that again? Sorry, I cannot see this. The, uh, oh, it's plantbud.ph. Plant Plant bud. Flash it on the screen. Excuse me. Plants bud. Plant bud. Just think of plant bud. Plant bud. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that it? Plants bud. Ph. No, it's plant buds. Move the buds. Mm -hmm. Ah, plants oh, bud. Plant, okay, sorry, sorry. My bad. Let me correct it. <laughs> so the that's you know, also a nice topic for dealing, you know, with the stress during this pandemic. <laughs> not just uh, not just being able to buy the vegetables to eat more vegetables, but you know, people have gone into uh, urban agriculture to survive uh, and to get the fresh produce themselves. And then it's, it's good. going to be allowed. So, oh, she's okay. showing us our, her garden now. Is that right? Is that right? Plant buds. <laughs> plant, plant buds. Yeah, okay. there's plant no. buds, correct? Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, so there's nice plants at the back. It's uh, always invigorating, you know, to look at plants. <laughs> they say you should have plants inside your house. Mm, I do. That's right. It's longer here. It really is refreshing. It, it's part of the being, and you know, it, 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 there's nothing like having having plants around, like this beauty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, 
Well, at least it makes the air, di ba? Dapat sabi nila, coronavirus is ano, airborne. So, it, it makes your air ano, uh, bacteria-free. <laughs> all the plants inside your house. Uh, so, plant yeah. bud, plant buds PH is a website or is it a Facebook page? Uh, we, have, we, have we have an IG. Well, our show oh, is Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. And plant okay. bud PH Facebook is for communicating. We load um, some Okay. So maybe so, Paul can take that hobby, hobby, new hobby, <laughs> something. Uh, yeah, probably be good for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very okay. much. Uh, thank Paul. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Before we say goodbye, we have yeah, we have uh, several comments. Actually, it's been here. It's been waiting. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. uh, uh, let me see. So that we can, we can flash on our screen. From the start, we had Chris Taroma. Uh -huh. My brother-in-law. Okay, look, he's still there. <laughs> Zell Nacion, watching from Iloilo. Yeah, okay. Also, we had Ophel John Maria. He was supposed oh, to ask a question. <laughs> but I think uh, I experienced depression before when my hypothyroid was unaddressed even as a person with ADHD found out that it's correlated with it as well yes he is an endocrinologist that's Dr. Perfor. okay and I think yeah Paul um, mentioned it okay so all right so I, I guess your answer your the question was answered by Paul <laughs> But you know, you know, it's very interesting uh, that before it used to be that the females have uh, problems with the, their thyroid, they have thyroid problems. But I don't know why uh, incidence of uh, hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism has increased with males nowadays. Correct. Uh, correct. I, have a, I have a brother in law who had that. My wife's doing her job making sure I got we got the email. Thank yeah. you. That's why I'm I know I left something out. That's why Save I have uh, a helper. Okay. My wife's okay. a helper. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Judy, also a very good Partner, singer that's helper. Right? <laughs> Partner, Partner and helper. <laughs> so, it's difficult. Okay, so guys, okay, are we wrapping up? Uh, so yeah. I think we we can have uh, some final messages from each one of them. Okay. Just to wrap up. Okay, who goes first? Okay, Aya, Aya, can you go first? Okay, uh, everyone watching, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time, for, for being with us with us today. And uh, I'm sure you landed you landed here because there's the, the good enough reason. And if you suspect that you are feeling a bit um, different or maybe there's something beyond uh, the normal, the normal sadness that you're feeling or the, the normal unrest that you're feeling, uh, I encourage you to seek help uh, from, from uh, you can go to Safe and Sound Ministries. Uh, and um, yeah, so um, seek help, get diagnosed, and don't Google too much. <laughs> uh, I hope you're well and uh, stay safe. Yeah, so um, I was thinking, you know, I think what people need is, is an acknowledgement what they're going through. So I'm, I'm going to try to acknowledge as much as I can. Um, so I acknowledge it right now if you're feeling alone, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling paranoid, if you're feeling, even if you're experiencing things that are absolutely crazy, like you're seeing things that you don't know you're having a hard time with what reality is, really, really serious stuff, you know, acknowledge you, um, acknowledge depression, acknowledge trauma, um, acknowledge loneliness, acknowledge isolation, um, what else? Um, I acknowledge your moods, you may be experiencing that your moods could be all over the place, that can be normal, there's people right now who 
uh, have have actually never experienced anything in their mental health like negatively. Like they they've been pretty good, and then all of a sudden this thing's hit, and they're experiencing these negative emotions for the first time. So if you're if you're that person, um, you know I acknowledge you, and this is a normal process for you to be feeling this way. And for those who've already had mental health issues uh, before, you know I acknowledge you as well. So all these things, it's understandable why you could be experiencing <laughs> during a time like this. So just want to let you know that you're acknowledged. And if you need help, please ask for help. One of the best things that I did is that I, cute little kid. One of the best things that I did is I asked that I had to come to terms with what I was going through and I, I asked for help. So I, I saw a professional. So um, if, you ever, if you need help finding a professional, me and my wife cannot can also do that. That's also one of the big things we do is we we appoint people with professional help. We don't we're not professionals ourselves. We're, we just we'll try to support you as best as we can. So don't be shy. Uh, I know it's it's really easy to be shy right now and to hold it in, but please don't because these emotions, I'm telling you, they they can really grow and they can really get worse. So just acknowledge that and and go through a process of, of doing what you need to do. Uh, to, to get through this. So, yeah, that, that's what I would like to say. All right, thank you. you can well, yeah, uh, to yes. add that, oh, can I add Save something? Uh, to add to, uh, yes, to yes. Add what Aya yes, and Coco sure. said, uh, yes. I would like to say that uh, for better mental health, uh, we just have to feed our brains with healthy, happy thoughts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Stay positive, so, guys. And, yeah. It's okay to be, you know, alone now, and there are a lot of steps. You just have to, yeah. you know, find ways. Even in our right now, we're working from home, so okay. So, guys, yeah. thank you so much. Thanks. Don't forget safe and sound for mental health, and for um, Aya Aya De Leon, uh, find her on Facebook. Also, uh, Bud, Bud, yeah. sorry, forgot again, Bud Speech. No plan, Bud. Plan, Bud. Speech. <laughs> yeah. All right. And of course, BIG Business Innovations Gateway for Mom, uh, mm -hmm. so HTV Philippines. And you can also watch this again and again and again on demand on our Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Okay, so guys, thank you for hanging yeah. out with us. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for having me. Thank you, Raymond. Yeah, yeah see you all again. Like Good to see you, Betty and I. Uh, bye bye. Yeah, next week again, congratulations. Yeah, guys, stay safe, everyone. Yeah, you too. Take care. <laughs>